Hello everyone and welcome to the first lesson of the second module in the Piano Etudes course here at Liberty Park Music. We're going to start you off with something fun. This is a piece that uses one single gesture throughout, very similar to the little prelude piece from the last module. And the biggest difference between this piece and that piece is that this piece uses significantly more harmonic movement throughout. But not to worry. We're going to find that there is a very clear pattern to how that harmonic movement is happening that's going to make life a whole lot easier for us while we're learning it. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so if you haven't seen figures that look like this before, what we're looking at is simply a regular string of eighth notes filling out our three beats. But because we're playing the first one with our left hand, we see it attached to the bottom of the beam in the bass clef. I know it looks a little strange, but if you think about it and realize that to actually put it properly in the bass clef, we'd have to use a bunch of rests to fill in the empty spaces for both staves, you realize that it really does allow the page to stay cleaner and easier to look at. Now, what it kind of looks like is that you're supposed to play this first eighth note in the left hand no longer than any of the other, so like this. But really, as with the dynamics, there's a bit of flexibility concerning how you interpret and play this. This piece is coming from a time that hinged between the Baroque period, when keyboard performance practice was a bit drier, and the Classical period, in which the rise of the piano was starting to turn things a little softer and a little more fluid. The composers of the Baroque were mostly used to using older keyboard instruments like the harpsichord, clavichord, and organ, but in the decades after J.S. Bach's death, the piano started to really gain traction, and its sustaining and dynamic changing abilities started to leave an impression on newer composers. All of which is a very long way of saying you can hold that left hand note for a little longer. And what's going on in that left hand? A, 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 lots and lots of A's. We call this a pedal tone, which is actually called as such in reference to the old organ practice of holding down a big bass foot pedal um, while other things are played on top of it. It kind of gives a feeling of both stasis, but also building potential energy. Um, like now we're really going to have to move after having spent so much time in the same place. Now the right hand is playing chords over top this pedal tone. Right, like that. And while the harmony that's being created is incorporating the pedal tone, there's something about the consistency of the pedal tone that kind of puts it into the background. When, when we analyze this harmonically, we tend to identify these chords as occurring over a pedal tone instead of trying to define each as though the pedal tone were a structural part of it, like an actual note in the chord. Now, going through and playing um, the right hand as chords is a really good way to get used to the relatively small changes between the chords. But the other important thing to consider here is the fingering. Really make sure you're paying attention to the fingering, as it can make a big difference regarding how challenging this is for your hands to play. 
Now one sidebar note on that. Notice down in measure four, the fingering in parentheses. Um, that is optional fingering you can use rather than the primary fingering, and I actually like it better. I like the less movement of using two and three on the C and E instead of having to move your entire hand up a step to play with one and two. Watch as I play the right hand there um, from measure three. So this is the way not in parentheses. You can see that I have to do a full step up from here to here. Now watch the other way with the note with the fingers in parentheses. Watch how my hand can basically stay in the same spot. One more time. I definitely tend to like the less movement option um, wherever I can find it. It just makes things a little bit smoother. Any less movement you can do is usually going to be better. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.